There's power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Well, good evening and welcome back to Grace Fellowship Worship Center where Jesus Christ is Lord and we're just grateful that he's still on the throne, so on himself mighty and strong. Afforded us another blessed privilege opportunity to come and share with you this day. Let's continue to look at what God's divine is doing in and through each and every one of us. And we're so grateful as we continue to look at those who foreshadowed Christ by the Old Testament and knowing that it was only because of their divine relationship with the Father, amen, that they was able to do extraordinary things, amen. amen. And tonight we're going to look at, look at um, Genesis chapter 6, we're going to look at Noah, amen, and what God utilized Noah to do. And, and just knowing this here that when we look at these different individuals in the Bible and how they was steadfast, unmoving, and always and abiding what the Lord, the Lord of the Lord has given them to do. And we hear so many times that, you know, we want to do those things that are pleasing to God, but it was people like Noah, amen. We talked about Enoch last week, amen, and how Enoch walked with God. And here it is that, you know, it's the same thing said about Noah, that he would walk with God, amen. amen. He walked with God. And so let us you know, put up our Bible to Genesis chapter 6. We will read, amen, verses 1 through 12, amen. We'll just begin to talk about, you know, these things that God blessed Noah to do, amen. 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 We understand that he built the ark to the saving of souls, but the only soul that he was able to save was those of his household, amen. 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 Those in the house, we thank God for those in the house, amen. And let us thank for the reading of God's word. And let us continue to keep, amen, um, Elder Earl's wife, Sister Vern, amen, in prayer, amen, and it's there in the spirit of observation now, but we're already declared and declared that she's healed in amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 She's healed in Jesus' name. Praise God. Genesis chapter 6. Now it came to pass when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughter was born to them. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not scribe with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also after when the sons of God came to the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. That every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continuously. And the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air. For I am sorry that I have made them, but Noah, mm -hmm. hallelujah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the generation, the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Sam, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was all also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their ways, their way on the earth. Father, we thank you for this blessed grace that you have bestowed upon us. So grateful for your divine presence, Lord God, that dwell within upon us. We thank you, Father God, for your word, Lord God, that continue to give us 
head and sight and understanding, Lord God, what you divinely have done, Lord God, and, and how we as mankind, Lord God, ought to, Lord God, have a divine relationship with you. So, Father, we just pray tonight, Lord God, as we work to your word, Lord God, as we speak on Noah, Lord God, and what you divinely have called him to do, Father, and Lord God, to the saving of souls, Lord God. But, Lord God, we know that you desire to know what your parents will also repent, Lord God, and have everlasting life. And, Lord God, just seeing how everything that is done, Lord God, is always, Lord God, a foreshadow of Christ in and through your word. So we'll just wait for this day. Praying, Lord God, that you just rest upon us this evening, Lord God, and that you will show yourself mighty and strong, Lord God. Forgive any that was sin committed by Omission Covenant's word through the thought, Lord God. Repent in all things, Lord God, and be akin to the permanence of your word, Lord God. Praying that you've been the awesome wonder that you are, Lord God, that you move mightily, that you are glorified this evening in the name of Jesus. Open the spirit to eyes, ears, and minds, Lord God, that we all see, hear, and also comprehend what you're saying unto us, Lord God, that you were written upon our heart, that we might not sin against you, Lord God, and that you will continue to show yourself mighty and strong, watching over us, covenants, and keeping us in the name of Jesus. And we pray for those that are bound and firm in their bodies, declaring that they are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. There's just so much, amen, as we're going to look in the life of Noah and the call that God had on Noah's life. And you will hear countless occasions that, you know, Noah, you know, he did what the Lord has commanded him to do. Amen. He stayed on task. He stayed on course. He did those things that God has given him to do. And now we look at Noah and we understand that you know, Jesus said, in like as it was in the days of Noah, such a bit in the times, mm -hmm. is that we're seeing that it's just so much corruption in the earth, mm -hmm. you know, you know, so much corruption in the world, mm -hmm. amen, but we know that God so what loved the world that he what hey. gave his only begotten son, amen, so, but it was God's divine plan, amen, that he was saved, amen, so, mm -hmm. amen, he desired that no one should perish, but when we look at it and we see how things have transpired, even today, even today, the wickedness of man, the corruption, amen, and just the evil intents of hearts of mankind. And we, we're in such a dispensation where we're seeing it just all too often, amen. And it's just like corruption has just, just overtaken everything, but it hasn't, amen. But, you know, these are things that must happen, amen. And so we understand that he declared that, you know, in any time there should be wars and rumors of war, earthquakes and out of the places, amen. You will see man's love wax cold one for another, amen. And these are the things that we are experiencing that we're seeing, amen. It's like there's just a lack of love one for another. And he said that it is just corruption. Mm -hmm. The evil intents of the heart. What are you thinking? What is going through your mind when God looks at you and, and he sees these things here and just knowing that there's nothing that passes God's knowledge or understanding? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. He sees all. He knows all. So he's mm -hmm. omnipotent, omnipresent. Just think about it. You know, he's omniscient. He says he's that God that knows all things. He's everywhere at all times. There's never a place that he's not. Right. And think about it, that he don't just look on just the just, but look on the unjust as well. Amen. Amen. And so it, it, it behooves us as believers, amen, to always do a a, a spiritual checkup, mm -hmm. amen, a spiritual checkup where that we can, you know, really begin to see whether or not we're online with God. Because we look at Noah and, and it's just amazing that, you know, God used this one man, amen. It was just one man. And when you read the story about Noah, it doesn't say that he had any help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it didn't say that anybody else pitched in. It doesn't say even his sons pitched in. None of those individuals, but it was God that gave Noah the instruction to build his ark. Right. And, right. and and that it was in a time where we know that that he said something, but it never registered with the people. Amen. It never registered with the people because they had never seen it. They had never experienced it. So it really then mattered to them. There's a song that says, you know, that if the sky is falling, you know, you know, 
they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't even mind be, be thinking of, would be mindful of, it. amen. And so, but we're looking at is that he is a man that loved God. And we all should love God. The word says, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul. Amen. But it says, love thy neighbor, you love thyself. And so just look at the neighbors and the individual that you know that he responded to when he asked, What is you doing, Noah? A man says, It's building the ark because what it's gonna rain. Mm -hmm. Yet one message. Yeah. One message. And so that this this message, it is to remind us that we may not experience the rain as in those days, mm -hmm. but there's always gonna be some type of rain. That's right. That's right. In some essence or another, there's gonna be something that's gonna rain down upon you or try to you know, overshadow you, but we have to remember that we are covered in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And we don't have to accept those things that the enemy tries to rain down upon us. Mm -hmm. You know, so therefore we have to stay faithful and true to God. That's right. And so, but when you look at situations like this and where that that nor he kept the charge that God had given him. Amen. Amen. He kept the charge and he built an ark. Just think about it. Noah was the of the tenth generation of mankind. And, and, and Noah is one of those that came line the, the birth line of Seth mm -hmm. when man began to call on the name of the Lord. Amen. And so that when God looked at the things that was going on in his time. It's just so similar to our time. Okay. When God saw that and he saw that, you know, that it was just corrupt. Just corrupt. But God stated that he was going to bring a flood upon what? Mm -hmm. Upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Amen. But he instructed Noah and says that, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of thought of his heart was only evil continuously. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. The earth was also corrupt before God. So just think that before God, before God, you know, before God, that God is seeing, God is experiencing, God is a witness to all this is going on. And it said, and the earth was filled with violence, mm -hmm. filled with violence, filled with it. And so we can see, even right now in this present time, that's right, that it is filled right. with Violence. Amen. Amen. Filled with violence. You know, but we're thankful to God that He is a merciful God. Amen. Yes, Amen. Amen. He's a merciful God. And he gives us an opportunity to repent. He gives us an opportunity to repent. Because if God poured out his anger and poured out his wrath immediately, mm -hmm. if God would what was was sitting down in judgment soon as you thought about doing what you want to do you know mm -hmm. and, but you know we look at this and we we, we look at and, and understanding that the reason that the romans the Carthians, and those individuals they, they, they you know when those day of time the reason that they they made these public examples of people to what deter anyone else mm -hmm from doing anything like this. That's right. Amen. 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 That would hurt anyone from doing something, you know, would cause them to be hung in, in the public and, and viewed in the public. Amen. And we have to be mindful as well as that, you know, if God put up a billboard of every thought that runs through our mind, you know, <laughs> just think about it. Amen. And uh, we can all think of some stuff. Amen. But, but but we're grateful that God himself, he does not deal with us according to our sin, not according to our iniquity. And the iniquities are the things that are hidden in our heart. 
not the open thing that we do openly, but no, the thing that we don't speak on, mm -hmm. the thing that we think about, the thing that we don't say, you know, these, the, the, those things, you know, but God is a God that sees all these things here. Amen. 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 He sees all of this here. And, but it says the, the repentance of God is not a change in his purpose, but a change in his attitude, a change in an attitude. And so when we see this here, when it occurs in man, it, it usually implies a change of mind. The word repentance in human speech re represent a change. Mm -hmm. We have a change of heart. We turn. Not 360, but 180 degree turn. Mm -hmm. Meaning that we're not going to walk the same way that we was walking. We're not going to act the same that we was acting. We're not, not going to do the same thing we've been doing. Amen? So there has to be a change. That's right. Change being that there's a metamorphosis in the way that we're now, we understand God has gotten our attention because he has now let us see that the way that we've been operating, the way we've been doing things, that is not pleasing unto him. Mm -hmm. Not pleasing unto him. We may try to please man mm -hmm. in every kind of way, but you would never come, you would never please man. That's right. That's right. And so our ultimate purpose is to uh, please God. God. That's right. Amen. 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 God, he never changes his mind. Mm -hmm. He never changes his mind. His mind is always constant. Amen? Amen. And because he's both, he's always loving, and he's always holding. Mm -hmm. Think about it. He's always loving, and he's always holding. Amen? Amen. And that's it. For us to be holy, what? Because he is holy. holy. That's right. He's given us his holy presence to dwell in us. Amen. And through his holy presence, amen, wants us now to live in a manner and walk in a manner just as he does. Amen. Mm -hmm. Allowing the love of God and the holiness of God to be spread across my heart to others. Amen. amen. When God changes his behavior, when man changes his behavior, mm -hmm. When man changes in his behavior, then God changes in his attitude. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Man's behavior determines, you know, how we respond to God, but how God responds to us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Think about it. Amen. We want to experience God in such a you know mighty way, but are uh, we doing the things that God requires of us to do? Amen. Now I'm often speaking that we ought to live a repentant life before the Lord. Amen. We ought to live a repentant life. But we must understand is that that repentance is that when man recognizes that he has sinned against God. Think about David when David realized that he had sinned before God. And Nathan had to come and give him so many examples, amen. And that when he finally got it, mm -hmm. you know, he said, Have mercy on me, O oh God. Mm -hmm. Have mercy on me, O oh God. Meaning that we don't want your wrath. That's right. We don't want your eternal punishment. We're saying that have mercy upon us. Is that we're crying out that you will be merciful, that you will stay in your grace. In your grace to us, amen? amen. And so, this is what God requires of us. It is ours for us that we will become a people who recognize when they have done wrong. For the word declares that we all have sinned mm -hmm. and fallen short. short. Mm -hmm. We haven't hit the mark. That's right, amen. That's right. We haven't hit the mark. We can paint a good picture. Mm -hmm. Say that, amen. We can paint a good picture, amen. You know, but we have to realize that God's the sovereign God. Yes, he is. And he sees all, knows he all. Knows. You know, there's nothing escapes him. And that's why the psalm says in 139 says, where can I go from your presence? Mm -hmm. You know, if I make my bed even in here, guess what? He's there. <laughs> Amen. 
you know, climb the highest mountain. Guess what? Yeah. He's there. Paul said, why does he guess what? He's yeah. there. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's there. And so that's why I try to encourage us to repent. I love what Job said. Job said, you know, he, you know, he repented for his children. That's right. But they may at some point in time done something that was against God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So that's why when we pray, we're always praying that, you know, have mercy for that. We repent of any and all things done by omission and commission, word, deed, or thought. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Think about it. Because God, man, the all wise, all knowing God. Amen. Mm -hmm. But Noah, amen, is that, that Noah found grace. grace. Mm -hmm. That Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Just think about it. He found grace. Amen. Found grace. And it's not that grace is elusive. Amen. But the way that he lived his life, the way that he lived his life, you know, grace was placed upon him. And now this grace that was placed upon him enabled him to carry out what God has given him, the assignment that God has given him, that he was able to carry out because of the grace. Yeah. The grace on his life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The grace. And the thing about it, it takes a special grace to do things. Yeah, we, just, we, you know, we, we, we try our best. We can do things in our own power authority and might. Like, like, you know, it says, you know, it's not about our own power authority and might, but it's by, by spirit. So the spirit of God, he's the one that empowered us mm -hmm. to do the things we're supposed to do. But it said that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord was looking at all the people that was in that period of time. He was looking at all those people mm -hmm. and he found this one little bright spot in the multitude of all the people. He found he found this one individual that he could grace to carry out an assignment that was that was saved souls. Mm -hmm. Think about it. He saw this one little bright speck, amen. Out of all of the corruption that was going on in the world, every man, he said, he said, every man, not just few men, but it says every man just was doing evil. So it wasn't every man, but it was just so many men, men that was doing corrupt things, but but God saw one that wasn't operating like they was operating. And see, this is what separates you from, you know. From the masses. When you're walking in a man that you really desire to do what? Please God. God now gives you a grace. Amen. Amen. He gives you a grace, amen, that 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 will really, amen, will show that you know that you are truly in a divine relationship with God. And that only thing that you desire to do is that you want to please God. That's it. That's it right there. You just want to please God. It's That's not about pleasing nobody else, but you have a heart desire to do that which is right in the sight of God. Amen. That's what it says. That he found favor. He found grace. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. When the Lord looks at us, what do he see? But mm -hmm. I can let you in on something. You don't see us. <laughs> he sees Jesus. Amen. That's what Paul says, our life was hidden in Christ, who was in God. That's right. He's placed us in the rock of ages. He's placed us like it did with Noah, Moses. Amen. Place him in the cleft of the rocks. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's placed us in Christ Jesus, who, 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 who seals us. Amen. Mm -hmm. He said, we've been sealed to the day of redemption. Mm -hmm. Been sealed. Amen. But just think about it, that God looked at all those individuals doing that. Let's go back and read this, amen. Let's go back, amen. Let's go back. Amen. Go back. Let's go back. Jesus. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, mm -hmm. that every intent of the thought in his heart was what? Mm -hmm. Only evil. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Just 
Thank you, Bob. I don't want to get to that part talking about the giant just yet, but we'll revisit that some other times. Amen. We'll revisit that some other times. But it because of the heart, and it said, and the Lord was sorry that he made man. Let's, let's read that from the from the message. Amen. Let's read it from the message. Amen. Let's read it from the message. Amen. When the human race began to increase with more and more daughters being born to sons of men, God noticed that the, that the daughters of men were beautiful. That they, they looked them over and picked out wives for themselves. Then God said, I am not going to breathe life into man and woman endlessly. Eventually, they're all going to die. From now on, they expect can expect a lifespan of 120 years. This was back in the day and also later when there were giants in the land and giants came from the union of the sons of God and the daughters of men. Mm -hmm. These were mighty men of ancient lords, famous one. God saw that the human race, the human evil, <clears throat> that human evil was out of control. People thought evil, imagined evil, 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 evil from morning to night. Mm -hmm. God was sorry that he made man, made a man, the human race. In the, in the first place, it broke his heart. So God said, I will get rid of my ruined creation. Make it clean, sweet. People, animals, snakes, birds, bugs, birds, the worst. I'm sorry I made them. But Noah was different. Mm -hmm. But Noah was different. Noah was different. Amen. But Noah was different. He was different. He was different. Amen. Amen. God liked what he saw in Noah. Wow. God liked what he saw in Noah. He liked what he saw in Noah. This is the story of Noah. This is the story of Noah. Noah was a good man, a man of integrity in his community. In his community, where he lived, where he's abide, and the people that was, you know, people saw him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Noah walked with God. Now we heard that Enoch walked with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. But he said it twice about Enoch, but don't say it once about Noah. Amen. Noah had three sons, Sam, Ham, and Japheth. As far as God was concerned, the earth had become a, a sewer. There was violence everywhere. God looked, took one look, and saw how bad it was. Everyone. Corrupt and corrupting life itself to the core. God said to Noah, It's all over. The end of human race, the violence is everywhere. I will make a clean sweep. Wow. It's going to make a clean sweep. Amen. A clean sweep that. He was now going to just think about this now. This would be the second time that God, well, the pre Adamite state was a cleansing as well. We'll talk about it another time, amen. But what God was doing there in Genesis, it was restoration, mm -hmm. he was restoring, amen. Because once again, he had flipped the world upside down, mm -hmm. he had to separate the waters from the waters, is what he, had, what he did, amen. And so, therefore, he was redoing it all over again. Amen? Amen. So, that act there in Genesis was God restoring the earth. Amen? And restoring was that he was cleansing it. 
And here in Noah's day, it was a cleansing once again. He had to cleanse the earth of all the corruption that was in the earth. He said that every thought and intent of the heart of man was just constantly evil. Amen. Wicked thoughts. Wicked, 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 evil, evil, evil. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, but you look at the word evil. Amen. And you turn it around. Live. It's spelled live. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you turn away from God, you begin to live evil. Because <laughs> that's what life is turned around from. So now you used to live a life that was pleasing to God. Amen. A life that was pleasing to God, but now you're going to a manner that you have flipped life around. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened because what God created, a man in, 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 in Eden that he, he created an oasis is where that, that it was good. Mm -hmm. He said the first and the second day, and it was good. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> the third and the it was good. Amen. The fifth and the sixth day, it was good. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we did a breakdown each one. It's one and three, two and five, you know, and, and three and six. Amen. We did a breakdown of those, amen, a little while back. But he said that they was good. Mm -hmm. And he took the man that he had created and put him in the God. Amen. He took the man and put him in the God. So the man was placed into this beautiful oasis. Mm -hmm. But for where he was taken from, dry, corroded mm. area of life. It's amazing how God, he can take and put us in good places that's right that's right but if the good place does not help you see god you would never change mm -hmm. you would never change it doesn't it's not about where you live at but it's how you live where you at that's right <laughs> mm. how are you living are you living a life that god would be proud of, amen. Mm -hmm. Cause Jesus to stand up on the faculty of heaven and look down upon us, amen. That's what he did for Stephen mm -hmm. because he lived a holy life and the Holy Spirit was so, you know, waiting upon him, amen. Mm -hmm. But here it is that Noah, amen. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, God tells him to build an ark to save seed alive to be what? Replenish the earth. Replenish. That means that you want to do it again. So he tells to be fruitful and multiply and what? Replenish. He told Adam to be fruitful and multiply and what? Replenish. Amen? But without the ark, Noah could not have saved one life without the ark. Hmm. Without the ark. Amen? Think about it. Without the ark. Amen? He could not save one life. Not even his own. Right. Noah built the ark and the ark saved Noah. Mm -hmm. Noah built the ark and the ark saved Noah. Think about it. And that, that is why we listen, they listen together as a combination because that with one without the other, there's nothing. Amen? That's right. That's right. But look at this, that this typifies Christ. Amen? What it does, it typifies Christ fulfilling everything they did was some type of what Christ did. Christ did everything that his father had commanded him to do. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Now, look at this now that when you do an examination of the, of the ark, it was like three football field long. Amen? It gives you somewhere like, you know, eight to ten stories high. Amen. So what he had taken all the animals. Amen. Now, we always look at these pictures and have these pictures where there was, they went in two by two. Amen. Two by two. But those two by two was the unclean animals. Unclean animals. Amen. But the clean animals, they went in by second. Mm -hmm. 
They went in by seven. Amen. Amen. They went in by seven. The clean animals. Amen. Because the clean animal was what they was going to sacrifice to the Lord. That's right. Amen. They're going to sacrifice to the Lord. So the clean animals went in. And I know a lot of people, they don't really understand that, that those two by two was unclean. Mm -hmm. But the clean animals, they were, amen, they, amen, went in by seven. Just think about this here, amen. Just as no one could help Christ, no one helped Noah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. You would think that that people would have got the message and they want to lend a hand. Mm -hmm. You think they want to lend a hand, but nobody lent a hand. Amen. And it's sometimes when that when God is giving your assignment, it's not for somebody else to help you with it. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because the thing about this, this is that that we can look at through Nehemiah, that Nehemiah he called the forces together, amen. But even in the midst of that day, amen, you know, he had to now prepare the people that the people themselves will understand their purpose and the plan that God has for them. Mm -hmm. Amen. And what it would take for them to, to build, rebuild this wall. Amen. So but here it is that no one assisted Noah in building this ark. Amen. Mm -hmm. Just as no one was able to help Christ. Amen. Right. Just think about this here. Amen. Mm -hmm. But him doing this here was also a foreshadowing of Christ. Isaiah said that I am trotting around the, 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 the wine press alone. Amen. And of the people, there was none with me. Isaiah 63 and verse 3 said that Christ himself, he trotted the wine press by himself. Salvation was wrought on Calvary by Christ alone, nobody else. And it saved only those who believe and abide in Christ. The ark that, that Noah built saved only those who saved within the ark. Not one soul survived outside the ark. And so we must understand this is that there's a place that we all should be in, but then again, if we're not staying in that place, amen, amen, and that's the ark of safety with Christ Jesus, amen. So we must understand the first step we building the ark was to was to cut down the trees. So we have to cut down trees to build this ark, amen. Mm -hmm. And the cutting down the tree was representative of, of Christ, who was you know who was cut off, amen, in, in his age, amen. So we see that for the cutting was. Was cut off on the, he was cut off on the land of the living for the transgression of many people. He was stricken. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we read in Isaiah 53 that he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, and chest top was upon him. And by his strike, you know, we are healed. But he had to be cut down. And just as Noah cut down the timber, and as he cut down the wood himself, and I've always taught you that wood represents humanity. Mm -hmm. Humanity. Amen. Humanity. So, so Noah was instructed to pitch the ark. He pitched it inside and outside. He pitched the ark. And pitch, was, it was like a cellar. Amen? He sealed it inside. He sealed it outside. Amen? And there's a word that says kafara, amen, which translated what pitch, meaning that, that it was it was place that where it, it it sealed the ark that no water of anything would come in. Amen? Mm -hmm. Just think about it. Amen? Think about it. Think about it. It was, it was pitched. Amen? So, so it was waterproof. Amen? And therefore it was sealed like Christ himself has sealed us to the day of redemption. Amen? Mm -hmm. But we look at this here is that we don't know how long it took for Noah to build this here. Amen. Mm -hmm. But he built it until God Himself had said that it would rain forty days and forty nights on the earth. Amen. Amen. Forty days and forty nights. Seven days a week is going to rain. Forty days and forty nights it will rain. Amen. But God, Amen. He used Noah. Amen. He says in, in chapter seven, verse. One through four says, and the Lord said unto Noah, come thou and all thy household in the ark. For they have 
the, for, 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 for thee have seen, I have seen the righteousness before you in this generation. Of every clean beast, thou shalt take thee by Sabbath. See that? By Sabbath. Amen? The male and female and of the beasts that are not clean by you. Mm -hmm. The male and female of fowls also of the air by seven, male and female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. For yet seven days I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living something that I have made, I will destroy from off the face of the earth. So now we must understand this and now. This is the first time that we hear the word come in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's the first time we hear the word what come. Amen. So here it is now. If you look at this here, that he tells Noah, he says, Come thou and all thy household into the ark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He told you what? Come. Mm -hmm. Amen. But who was already in the ark? God. God mm -hmm. He's already there. Amen. Mm -hmm. God is already inside, inviting Noah to what? To come. Not to go mm -hmm. into the ark, but what? To come. Mm -hmm. Amen. And when it was time to leave the ark, God told him to what go forth of the ark. Amen. And the course of Noah's life came, he came forth with him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Before the rain began, the Lord shut him in. He shut him in. Think about this. Here. Before it rained, he shut him in. And so here now we see that. It was only Noah and all of his family that was in the ark. Amen? Mm -hmm. And we see Noah, Noah as a type of Christ and is here portrayed as the sole actor or participant of all that went on. Even as Christ is the sole activator of, of salvation, believers are his beneficiary. Mm -hmm. So here it is now, Noah he was the one that God utilized, amen, to save his whole household. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. But he got three sons. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't say that his son assisted him. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say that. Amen. See, sometimes even your sons and daughters, they may not understand the assignment. That's right. They may not understand the call that God has on you. Amen. But the thing about that, when but they're able to now experience the same grace that God has. <laughs> mm -hmm. They will experience the same grace. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because when they came into the ark, amen, they was were in safety. Mm -hmm. When they came into the ark, amen, they was not bombarded by the elements that was outside. And so we don't really understand how important it is, amen, that we stay and abide with in Christ. He said, abide in me. Mm -hmm. And the word abide in me, in him, amen, in us, amen. And we're abide in him. So he wants us to what? To abide. Mm -hmm. That means to stay. Don't go out, mm -hmm. amen. But so often, many people come when they go back out, and then again, take them a long time to get back in. Now, you got to realize this here. The reason that it takes people so long to get back in because they got so accustomed to what the outside world is doing. So you must understand this here. That, that if you get comfortable there, mm -hmm. amen, it's going to take a long time to get back in. And you don't really understand what goes on there because if you're not spending time in the presence of God, it's not about coming in my presence, but it's about coming to a place where we know the presence right. of God abides That's in. Right. Amen? That's right. It's coming to a close proximity where God himself is now is giving you a clarity and understanding about how you ought to live life in his presence. Amen? Right. Amen. And he told Noah and the family to come. Because he wanted him to come because he was already there. That's right. Amen. We're not waiting on God. God is waiting on us. 
us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So when we come into the house, meaning that we're coming in, that we can now receive some thought or some word that would encourage us, enlighten us, and equip us that we can continue to go on in the journey. Amen? Amen. Just think about it. Amen? That he told Noah to come in. So when God, when Noah came into the ark, it activated something. Mm -hmm. It activated salvation. It activated safety. It activated assurance. It activated, amen, because here it is now that you are in this safe haven, and therefore now, whatever's going on on the outside, can't come in. He says, keep on knocking, but you can't come in. Once he sailed the ark, when he closed the door, just mind you listen now, the door, it had one door, and the door was on the side. Mm -hmm. The side is a representation of Christ himself, amen, being pierced with in his side. Mm -hmm. Pierced in his side. But it also had one window, mm -hmm. amen, and the window was up top, mm -hmm. meaning that when we look to Christ Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, that we're looking for salvation, we're looking for the healing, we're looking for the grace, we're, we're looking towards the one that is able to heal, deliver, and set you free. Amen. 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 That's why when you read this, when you read the Bible, when you see these different things transpiring, just think about it. Amen. Mm -hmm. That it was only through Christ dying on the cross when he was pierced in the side and the blood and water came screaming down. Amen. It was just as when the door on the ark was closed. Mm. Amen. Wow. Praise God. Amen. Mm -hmm. It was Christ Jesus as John was saying that, that he is the light, the true light, was the light every man that cometh in the earth. Just think about it. Amen. We were pierced in the side, and the and the and they said the water came gushing out. Amen. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Praise God. One thing we must remember as well this year. Amen. Because the ark was sealed with pitch. Amen. That even though it had all of these animals in it. Amen. The buoyancy, it causes them to float. Mm -hmm. It causes them now to rise up over all of that that was going on around them. Amen. The storm was raging, but 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 the buoyancy of the of the water it causes them now to be above that. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you look at it as Peter that as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, Amen. That he, he walked on that water. That's right. Amen. Amen. This. Represent this here. This represent that God Himself is in control. Yes, he Amen. Is. Yes, He is. The, yes. The, the, think about it, that the ark did not have a runner. Mm -hmm. Amen. It didn't have a propeller. Mm -hmm. It was driven by God. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. It was driven by God. Who is driving mm -hmm. you? Are you driven by God? Amen. Good question. Good question. Who is driving you? And what is driving you? And where is driving you? Amen. God knew where he was driving this ark here. Amen. Because when it rests on Mount Ararat, amen. And you look at the day and time that it did. And so you look at it that it rested on the 17th day. Mm -hmm. Amen. It rested there. God was showing that when we come into a divine relational understanding of God and what he purposely want to do in and through our lives, we can rest assured, amen, that God got us. Amen. 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 We can rest assured, amen, that God got us, that he's going to take us where he wants us to go. Amen. And this is what we see here because we see Noah he built this up in a manner that it was pitched in and out that nothing, no water whatsoever seeped in. Amen? Amen. And 
chapter 8. And God remembered Noah. Mm -hmm. And every living thing. And all the cattle that was in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over it. That, that, and then the water of Satan. Mm -hmm. The fountain also of the deep. And the windows of heaven were stopped. And the rain from, from heaven was restrained. And the water returned from off the earth continuously. And after the end of 150 days, the water was abated. And the ark rested in the seventh month. On the 17th day of the month, upon Mount Ararat, it rested there. Amen? The seventh day of the month. Amen? The seventh month before Exodus Amen. 12, amen, was the month of Bill. When the Lord instituted the Passover, he revised the Hebrew calendar given the last half of the year preeminence, amen, over the first half. He awaited full revelation of what that, submit, that signifies that was the transfer in calendar. This month of Bill, the seventh month, shall be unto you the beginning of months. And it shall be the, the first month of the year, amen, according to Exodus 12, verse 2, amen. Mm -hmm. This day, amen, God legally changed the calendar for a purpose, amen. amen. And when we look at these things here, and as we do a, a deeper study, we begin to see why God did what he did, purposely. Amen. And you look at all these dates and times that they line up with what God has already designed and what God was already planning because what it was God who was instituting all these things here. Just think about this. These are the Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, the 10th day of Nisan, on the dump of coat where the no man has said, and the multitude that were that went before him, and the, and they fought that followed cried out saying, Hosanna. To the son of David, amen. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Just think about this, amen. And this this identified Christ as a Messiah selected by God, by God, by the Guardian to be what? The ultimate Passover lamb. Jesus was not only kept under observation, but was severely tested during those, what, four days. He was challenged by the chief priests and the elders. According to Matthew 21 through 20, chapter 22, amen. The Pharisees and the, and the Herodians, amen. In Matthew 22, 15 and 21. The Sadducees in Matthew 22, 23 through 33. The Pharisees with the lawyers, amen. He was constantly going through these examinations. But no one, amen, no defect could be found in him. That's why even Pilate said that he find no fault in him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. He proved himself to be what? The perfect Lamb of God. All of our calendars and most of our man-made books says Jesus Christ was crucified on Friday. It was, it is true that it was a preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. You read that in Mark 15, verse 42, amen? And the Sabbath drew on what? Luke, Luke and Luke 23, 54. But this was a special Sabbath, more important than the weekly Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day. According to John 19.31, the day after the Passover was always a holy convocation. God has said ye shall do no sort of work therein, no matter what the day of the week is. We can see that in Leviticus 23, verse 5 through 7, and also Exodus 12 through 15, 12, 12 15 and 17. Therefore, that special Sabbath could, could well be have been what on Friday. Jesus said plainly that as Jonah was three days and three nights in the well, barely, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Amen. Matthew 12, 40, amen. And I trust Jesus further than any man-made book or calendar. And we cannot, amen. And three days and three nights between Friday evening and Sunday morning? No, no, no. Therefore, I persuade that Jesus was crucified on Thursday, the 14th day of Nisi, and arose on the third day, amen, as has often been said he would, amen, as he said that. That was the first day of the week, the 17th day of Abel, Nisi, amen, as typified by Noah according to the landing, of the landing on the very same day. It was seven months and ten days. Later, before the earth was dry 
for them to for them to leave the ark wherein they had been what one year and seventeen days. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Amen. What does Noah do when he leaves the ark? Go up here to chapter nine, verse eight through eleven. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord. And it's the first altar that's recorded in the Bible. And took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offers on the altar. It's what he did. And God spoke unto Noah, amen. And God spoke, that was chapter 8, verse 20, amen. But and God spoke to Noah and uh, to Noah and to his son with him, saying, And I will be, and I behold, I establish my covenant with you. And with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowls, of the cattle, and of the every beast of the earth with with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth, and I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by water of a flood. Neither shall there be any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And as a token of God's covenant, he put the rainbow in the sky, which testifies the day of God's everlasting faithfulness. God cannot lie, and he never breaks his promise. Amen? Amen. Amen. So when we see this here, and that's why it's good to study the words they study, the sort of self approved, a workman out of saying, but right. rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. And just day 20, he built the altar. Amen. But he makes a covenant with the rainbow. Amen. In chapter 9. Mm -hmm. And let us know that the next time it won't be rain, but the next time it'll be fire. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. God will purify it all over again. That's why I said it will be a new heaven and a new earth. Amen? Mm -hmm. A new heaven and a new earth. Meaning that God himself, amen, that he would, amen, that he would cleanse it once again. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Well, praise God. Come on, give the Lord and come to praise him. Those that have been, we thank God for you this evening. Amen. Pray that this word has encouraged and enlightened you on the things of God. Amen. Go back and read this here. When you start reading from Genesis chick all the way, Genesis chapter six to chapter nine, and see what God the body has done and how he was in a restoration process. Right. Amen. A restoration, amen. And therefore, he was restoring things. Amen. Because there was one man that found what? Grace. grace. Mm -hmm. Found grace in the sight of God. Out of all the people that was doing that period of time, there was only one man that found grace. When God looks down upon your household, does he find grace? Does he find grace? Amen? So allow God to find that grace in your household. Because what? We want to live a life that is pleasing unto God. Amen? Amen. That we repent of any and all things that we continue to find ourselves cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, we pray God blessing upon you. We'd like to send an officer to this ministry. Amen. You can do it through Cast App, amen. You see it back in GFWBC, amen, 2012. That's dollar sign. That's what a dollar sign before it, amen. Uh, 2012, amen. Or you can use, amen, say, oh, 1917 But I pray God blessing and favor and grace that's upon you, amen. You can tend to just allow God to use you for something extraordinary. But remember, when God charged you, he's not charging nobody else. Amen. 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 God bless you and favor rest upon you in Jesus' name. Amen.